everyone! In today's video, we will be going over the elements of dynamic character design. So what that looks like, um, some of the terms, and how we can use some of these tips and tricks to help you in creating a more dynamic character, whether it be for comics, your own character design, or just for you to just experiment and get more of a dynamic character out of what you're drawing so far if it feels a little bit stale and a little bit stuck. So the elements we will be going over are line of action, silhouette, the contrast of contrast of forms, um, dealing with negative space as well, line quality, how you how you express your lines within your piece, and lastly but not least, color. So with all those elements, I feel like those are the most important in like just bottling down what are the dynamic what are really important dynamic elements to keep in mind when you're creating a dynamic pose and character. So when we get into it, as you'll see in some of these examples, how I figure that out and what my thought process is when making a dynamic piece of art for a character. So let's get into it. So I'm going to show a few examples um, so far. So the first important element of dynamic character design is in the posing and one way to get really good dynamic forms and a dynamic pose is of course line of action. Now if you're into animation or if you've taken like an anatomy class of course you've heard of line of, line of action. So I'm gonna use one of this, my pieces here. Well, a lot of these are all my pieces you're gonna see, but I'm gonna show you how I broke, how I came up with the pose and how I broke it down. And then I'm gonna show a live demo of me applying all or mostly what we've learned into a short illustration for you all. For our witch here, I'm going to make a new layer. This is a clip paint studio, by the way, that I'm using really good soft for the price it's mostly everything especially if you want to get into comics that's what i'm using for too my illustration stuff it's a really powerful software so i'm gonna use let me use a oops, sorry about that all right so i'm gonna let you guess first where you think the line of action is in this pose um, it's kind of well defined <laughs> Even if you kind of don't know what line of action is yet, what a better question would be for you is where is the gen general direction of this body going? Pause the video, do what you gotta do. Uh, but for those that don't know, like draw it out or if you had your guess. That's it. <laughs> that's my line of action. That's the basis. And if I go back to like pose that I had sketched out beforehand. Yeah, if you go back to the pose that I had made for it, I drew it out here as well. I drew it out here as well, so I made sure I made sure that that the line of action was very defined because I knew that was the pose that I wanted for this character. And the pose is very important for me because I'm like, this character is very loud, very taken up space, very rambunctious. And I had to illustrate or find a line of action that accurately depicted what I wanted to come off for that character. And so, of course, there's a lot, a lot of sketches because sometimes the line of action doesn't feel right or you're like, eh, that doesn't really match up with what I'm trying to convey. And it's okay. You can like, it's basically just a line. <laughs> and you can, there's a million different variations on how you can express this. And that's why sometimes it's kind of hard to choose one because you're like, dang, they're all really, really good. And how you build out from that is completely up to you how you can interpret this in a different whole other pose if I had wanted the shoulders to be that way it to be that way you know it could have been a whole different other pose here so I'm use a better color so you have to see it could have been a whole different pose here if I wanted the maybe them looking down or maybe they're falling you know but there's so many ways that you can just, you know, interpret what your character be doing all from a simple line, which I think is really incredible. So 
Another thing that I wanted to keep in mind when I was drawing them is that I wanted to make sure that silhouette was very, very, very um, easy, identifiable to know. So that's why you kind of see pointed feet here because it contrasts the curve of the spine because it contrasts the curve of their spine. Actually, I'm gonna use a white so y'all can see because <laughs> like some of these colors are just like not doing it. So I did the curve of the spine, contrast with the feet here. And I have the hands back here. Now the reason I kind of had them separated out and not really close because I wanted the silhouette to be very, very just dynamic, very easy, it has places to breathe, it has a negative space here, it has a negative space here, it has a negative space here. And that just breaks up the forms to be just easier to identify. It doesn't make it like hard. Like say if I had overlapped this hand back here and stuff, there wouldn't be any negative space there would be any negative space here and that would have made it very difficult to read that as a hand. I mean, of course you could add details and stuff, but what I'm trying to do and figure out is like, how can I get the character's demeanor, their expression across very easily with, you know, the least amount <laughs> of extra fluff to make sure you can understand the forms. That means I kind of didn't do my job well if you're confused about what's going on and the silhouette isn't clear for me, I feel like I didn't do my job correctly. And again, we have contrast in the form. So again, you have different, we have the curves and the straights. Always, if you want something dynamic, just play on curves and straights. So here we got kind of like a straight here, curve here, curve here, curve, curve. Kind of a straight actually. I'll say straight, straight, curve, curve, curve straight curve you get the idea so what i'm trying to do actually let me have that up there what i'm trying to do is make sure that i'm breaking up the form because everything's all soft i could have made them i could have made them very soft i could have you know had the form just just mellowing billowing going into each other very easily but then that wouldn't be very interesting there's no there's no conflict no conflict of shapes no conflict of just overall tone and where your eye is going because like i wanted the focus again to be the face face and then you go down because this line of action is commanding you to go this way with the pose and then again line quality is very important as well so if we're looking at let me get rid of the color so it'll be a little easier so Never mind the skin part. <laughs> so, if we're just looking at, yeah, that's my little trick. <laughs> Went over it. So, if we're just looking at the line, if we're just looking at the line quality. Again, everything's more or less kind of uniform because this is the main focus. Where that line of action kind of starts, that is the main focus for me, and that's why I made those lines kind of heavy. made the hat kind of light because that's not the main focus it's part of the overall shape right but it's not the main focus here the main focus is the face going down with this line of action kind of commanding you to look down here and see the whole figure so again if i wanted to if the line of action say was if i wanted it to be focused more up here I would have probably made this part a little bit more heavier and then the line work down here more lighter that is defined just a little bit more softer but it's all the intent of the artist so you, when you're creating a piece of work you have to ask yourself what is my creative intent what am i trying to convey when i am drawing this character or you know what what 
am I accomplishing for myself what I what I wanted this character to come off as or what I wanted the pose to come off as you know there's different ways to ask yourself these questions so you don't feel like lost when you're designing a pose for a character or even like animals or you know, scenery or stuff like that you have to ask yourself what are the important choices that I'm making that are helping to drive this point that I want to be made essentially and then lastly, of course, would be color. Um, this one I put last because color, I'm still kind of learning how to apply color um, effectively to a design to like make it come off well. So I just kind of went with good old, <laughs> good old colors that kind of were like harmonious and also contrasty. So you see a lot of greens here. They're all like the green family. And then you have some purples here because purple kind of contrast is a little bit of green if you look here purples like here greens like over here so they're um complementary colors opposites of each other so that was kind of my basis <laughs> nothing really too fancy um but yeah so that was kind of like how i approached this one if we look at this dude here so I, you're gonna notice uh, I have a dog, I have an Afghan dog. <clears throat> There's an Afghan dog and then there is our fancy dude here. So basically I use the same elements here. I'll let y'all, let me give y'all a moment to figure out where is the line of action in this piece. Where for both the dog and the person, where do you think that line of action is? With giving your guess or writing over it or yeah, doing what you gotta do, we're gonna break it down. So. Over here, you just use lights. <laughs> Line of action here. Uh, whoop, there it is. <laughs> We're gonna do the other way. There it is. <laughs> that is my line of action. That's what I use. For a dude here, it was there. And sometimes I like to lead with the leg with the line of action because that just helps me, just makes it more stable. Um, but easily could have been like here could also been there if I wanted to but I like to lead with sometimes the leg it just makes it easier that's kind of sometimes if y'all look at some other artists you'll see the line of action just carry out through the leg and we're like huh that's why it feels complete because it has a start and finish from the head to the toe so the reason so I had the idea I was like okay I want to do like dog sonas. I want to see like how I can translate this dog's kind of like emotion, pompous emotion or behavior, you know, to our character here. And the whole point that I wanted to try out was like, okay, so what is this pose even gonna look like? I don't know. <laughs> but you know, what I did, I took some videos, some reference videos on myself, like doing the pose, feeling what would feel right, and then exaggerating it, and just making sure I had a clear, time concise line of action here, as you can see. And then once again, silhouette. The hand kind of gets lost here, so, but the overall shape and form is here. You have a little negative space here, a little negative space here. The dog has a little negative space here, negative space here. You know, so I'm just helping to just make sure at least the silhouette has an identifiable form that if you were to black it out, you'll be able to know what's happening, <laughs> essentially. And it won't seem just like a mess of just forms and the details are helping to single that out. And again, if you learn live action, like if you just look at um, human forms, you could easily apply it to animals. That's what I've kind of been doing, kind of a branch out and stuff. And it's not all that difficult because even though you know, animals have different anatomy from humans but they all have a direction they are going they are trying to convey and if you look at like disney films and see how their character designs and stuff are kind of divvied up you'd be like huh i understand and so yeah so making just everything just easy identifiable making sure that you have a clear line of action when you're making your character is beyond <laughs> very important and i lead with the feet 
sometimes not all the times if i feel like it doesn't fit with the overall image but i sometimes like to lead with a body part because <laughs> it helps me to make sure i keep the line of action clear and concise along with the silhouette again line quality for this one it's different let's see if i can show you all yeah so line quality for this one was very loose very light um it's contrasted from the previous piece you saw not that one this one from this one because it was very heavy on the line art heavy on just solid form <clears throat> yeah so it was heavy on the line art very heavy heavy on solid forms because i wanted to make sure that character felt solid this one i wanted it to feel a little bit more looser um play a little bit more because it goes with the kind of looseness and flowiness of the dog so if you see the afghans they're very you know very pompous and flowy and long hair or luxurious locks and i feel like with harsh kind of line work that wouldn't have come off really well for that piece for this piece wouldn't have done what i wanted to do so yeah well there you go and in color very kind of keeping it harmonious these this is just shade ugh, same shade of color of tan brown this one blue for a little bit of contrast from the warm colors and that was kind of all overall my my thinking just contrast until i get more versed in coloring and you know get more adventurous than that i'm kind of keeping it a little bit safe <laughs> so the piece doesn't seem overwhelming and that color is, is the main driving factor i don't want that to be i want my poses and my live action to be so if you're doing the opposite that's totally okay just prioritize what you feel is important to you when you're doing your character design all right so this one did you grab that <laughs> with this one it was a little bit more difficult <laughs> And this is before I had my uh, my Hewan. So yeah, this is all with my good old Wacom. So with this, I'm gonna let you guess once again. This will be the last one, and then we're gonna get and apply some of these techniques. So this is was <laughs> so I'm gonna give you a moment to figure out where the line of action is for our main figure here. Call him Eddie. So where is the main you know line of action for eddie again you know try do your own variation which you think that is but where do you think the overall line is the direction of his body is going let me give you a minute all right so now that you had your guess all right i'm gonna draw it out for you boom <laughs> again again i i lead with feet <laughs> or i lead with legs <laughs> it just it just helps me for some reason now that i'm looking at a lot of my work it helps me uh but yeah so you also could have said this one but it felt a little tight here that's why i like that one that's a little bit more open so yeah but yeah so that's our line of action there and again we have contrast of straights and curves the silhouette is easy here's a naked let me get something that isn't white <laughs> Here's a negative space here, kind of negative space kind of here, negative space here, here. And I don't know if I explained it. Negative space <laughs> is the space that positive forms kind of make. So it's that space in between where there's nothing. And that kind of makes a very clear silhouette. If you look at, you know, Mickey Mouse or SpongeBob and Fort Patrick or, you know, iconic cartoons they make really good use of their negative space that's how you're able to tell if something's a hand or a horn because that form in between is very clear and identifiable in addition to the positive space so with our boy here we're making sure that the pose is seen all the way through that that you know that line of action is carried all the way through you kind of feel the closeness you can feel like he's being squished he's in danger because of this line of action here and the silhouette also helps and the lines 
that I did. They're all kind of, kind of a little bit different. The hands are a little bit more looser, but the pants and stuff, they're all kind of like the same kind of line quality. Try to keep it the same because I want it more uniform because there's already a lot going on. So if we had like different widths of like line, it would have been a little bit more distracting. It would have been as clear, I feel like, if I had done that. And then the colors, again, I kind of kept them <laughs> Uh, kind of analogous they're all different shades of blue <laughs> and then of course you have the yellow here just adding us that contrast but overall I kind of kept it together because he is his own kind of figure within the center of this piece and he kind of drives your eye toward him because he's taking up so much space <laughs> and also a cool tip your line of action just doesn't have to be one once you get what I would say for a beginner I would say start off with one but if you're just getting into it, I mean, if, you, if you've known it for a while, you want to expand it a little bit, I would say you can do two lines of action. Because <laughs> right here we have the main, I would say this is the main vein, right? Yeah, so you have a stem here because of, you have the foot going or the leg going and then you have the hand coming out. So they're kind of like along the same plane of action happening as well. You could do one here too, boom. So I would say that is for when you get a little bit more advanced and kind of have an idea of what the general direction of your character, where they're facing, how they're being impacted by space or you know the environment around them. I would then go and use multiple different lines of action just to exaggerate certain forms. If you feel stuck or if a part feels a little bit stale, then I would say you can go on and just exaggerate that a little bit more. All right, so now that y'all kind of seen all the different ways that line of action is accomplished we're gonna start putting that into action all right so i got some reference photos from pinterest some just like different poses so i'm gonna use these two as examples so we're gonna hide i really we're gonna save this one for the second one it's gonna be the first one so so I usually just go right into it because I kind of know the line of action, but for y'all, I'm gonna break it down a little bit. So if you wanna practice this along with me, or if you wanna do it at home later and get your own reference, that's totally cool. So you know what to do and you're not totally lost. <laughs> so if you look here, again, even straight poses, cause it's, they're not completely straight. There's always a subtle like shift to one side because humans shift their weight around. And so, if you look closely, it suppose may look straight, but it's really not. Once you start getting the habit of identifying line of action, you'll know. <laughs> so if we look here, the line of action, let me do that again, I don't see that. Their line of action is here. Here. So, I don't know, it has a slight, I don't know, this looks straight. There's a slight curve here curve here again if I want to do a line of action for the the rest of the body here I'll be like that's one or be like that that's one but our main line of action right here is right here in that in that sitting position for a dude so if you move And then if I'm lost sometimes with hands, hands also have their line of action, which I was following another artist and they were like, yeah, don't forget, hands can also have line of action as well. I was like, what? Blew my mind. <laughs> Cause I'm like, nah, it's only the full body. And nope, oh, you can use it for like basically all parts and stuff, which is really cool. And again, so remember you're gonna have a straight. Well, actually it's kind of a little bit of a curve, but so we got a curve here, curve. And then you can slowly start erasing your live action if it starts to conflict with your overall piece, but you know, keep the basic one there. Boom. 
Dankeschön. So that would be one way. Cool. All right. The next one will be. So let's hide these. Let's group these together. Like that. So our next one will be this one. All right. Give you a moment. Where do you think our line of action is? Now with like really, really like exaggerated line of action, they're so fun because you can like really like stretch it along with your character, which is so cool. I think it's so cool. <laughs> so if I look here, if I look at him, all right, actually, that's his line of action. Or that, because the foot's kind of leading with it, or let's go. If I wanted to include the foot even more, so I'm gonna do the left or the right foot. But I'm thinking it's more this way, personally. But you know, you everyone's interpretation differs for their line of action. It's totally okay. It's a little difficult to see what this this area the like oof I don't remember. I 
It's a little difficult to see what this area of the leg is doing, which is totally understandable because it's kind of hidden and obscured by the hand. But as long as you kind of know the direction, we know the direction of that line of action here, we can, we can make some decisions. So there's our kind of sketch right here. Again, the foot is very quick. <laughs> if I was doing this normally, I probably would have like made a lot of these shapes more simplified, but for the purpose of this exercise, that'll be for another video, how to just simplify forms and make them easier to read. But for this, I kind of wanted to show how you can kind of get close to just the feeling of the emotion, you know? but how to quickly just get that out there. You can see this one, twist his hair. Kind of a little here, this foot is not following, so. And I could clearly see like, oop, I didn't know. <laughs> I could quickly see how. I wanna say it's like this. But it's not working. <laughs> But I know there's a discrepancy here because it's not following the overall form of the line. There, there we go. The foot feels a little bit better. Okay. And what I'm doing here is pertaining, pertaining to line quality. So I'm just reducing the heaviness of these lines, making sure the forms read a little bit more clearer. And that's why it's another important factor in when you're drawing or when you're making dy expressing dynamic character design. Cool, yeah. But there y'all go. So I hope this was very helpful pull up the other one so I can see in comparison so again even the simplest of ones we still have we still have our line of action we still have our negative space and silhouette color doesn't really apply right now because I'm not applying color we do have your contrast form we have straights and curves and once you start getting into the habit of just seeing it breaking down okay what does this pose look like in the simplest form you start to exaggerate it and you see that a lot with like comic book heroes as spider-man except for especially you can see them just exaggerating that form because they know that line of action line of action and they're just building upon that very foundational level of understanding so once you have that i feel 
that is like opens you to whole door of opportunities and it's just very enlightening and helpful if y'all are interested i can post these in a gum road for free so you can download and just see how i broke down the forms or if you have any questions feel free to comment um or you know ask me anything as well if you want me to go over a certain topic or if you're having trouble in the forum please feel you can email me i'll leave my email and stuff below if you would like me to go over your forms in a video that would be something i really enjoy just critiquing going over forms and seeing what's working what's not working and giving you pointers and tips on how to fix it so thank y'all so all in all i hope this video is really helpful in you and helping you to understand character design and breaking it down on just easy digestible components uh it's gonna take some time also it's really good to look at other people's work and just to compare how they contrast all the line of actions, the shapes, the silhouettes, and just overall look at that, um, how they play with those and how they break the rules for some of them, what um, creative liberties that they took. So that's also really important to consider as well. Don't live in a silo, look around, look at other art that inspires you, and also try to break it down and see what they did to accomplish something that you really liked. And once again, my name is Charisma. I hope you enjoyed this video. Give a leave a like, subscribe, comment if you want more videos like this. And thank you so much for your time. Peace.